Hello, and welcome to Gehenna Gaming, where we tell dark stories and support inclusivity in gaming. And welcome back to Mask of Nyarlathotep, our cinematic 7th edition Call of Cthulhu actual play, where our five intrepid investigators are still looking into the mystery of their friend Jackson Elias's death, the Carlisle expedition, which seems to be... Uh, Elias's dying wish that they continue to investigate, and perhaps the case of Hilton Adams, a man currently serving on death row in Sing Sing for a series of murders that are shockingly similar to the death of their friend Jackson Elias. Before we begin, I want to thank our sponsors, Eldritch Foundry, Norse Foundry, HP Lovecraft Historical Society, Drive Through RPG, Infinite Black, and of course Chaosium. Um, we have a oh, I have to do mental math here. We have a Eldritch Foundry fifty dollar gift card and some books from Drive Through RPG for the Call of Cthulhu to give away during tonight's episode on Twitch. If you are watching this on YouTube after the fact or listening to the podcast, apologies that we do not have those available for you, but we do have ten percent off from Norse Foundry if you use the code Gehenna10 at checkout. So check that out. Uh, but without further ado, let me introduce our investigators. Oh my goodness. Hello, it's me, Rhea Sunshine, and I am, would you believe it, still playing Love LaRue. I can't believe it. <laughs> no. Hi, I'm Salem Sharf, slowly turning into a Talos and Jaffe character, um, playing <laughs> uh, Oliver. I, I need you to know you are the Sam Regal of this table. Yes, good, <laughs> good. I am Olufemi Showamimo. I am playing Adrian Beaumont. Oh, I'm Sharon Paris playing Ophelia Click. Tyler Sutherland playing Nicholas Porter. And without further ado, let us dive right back in to where our investigators left off in New York City. Yes. yes. <laughs> we actually left off with you on a train returning. To New York, having just listened to the recording of Dr. Cowell's lecture, you uh, asked the conductor, and this is a nice train, um, so they actually had a uh, Edison player for the wax cylinder, <laughs> and it was brought to your cabin where you were all able to sit around and listen to the lecture. We brought our own mixtape. Uh, the contents weren't completely surprising to you, but we are going to pick up at Grand Central Station in New York, where you've just returned. With a few things on your mind, love, you have a concert coming up mm. where you have invited Miss Erica Carlisle to attend, the sister of the late Roger Carlisle with, of the Carlisle Expedition. With no ulterior motives. None whatsoever. <laughs> um, you also had a few different things to look into uh you had mentioned potentially going to sing sing to visit hilton adams and looking into his case and then there's the last clue you've received from emerson imports about the juju house which is also in new york was it it's in also harlem? in sing sing it's oh. in, it's in harlem oh. erica carlisle's uh manor is in westchester up towards sing sing not, yes. not near it but i don't think the uh, wealthy estate owners uh yes. along the hudson river would appreciate sing sing being in their backyard <clears throat> yeah uh oh dear god <clears throat> it's fine uh yes the juju house is in harlem okay. so then it's currently uh, is it evening that we and we, uh... Yes. Okay. I'm going to get, yes, you have tonight to kind of decide what your next moves are. And then tomorrow night is Love's uh, show. And did we decide where that show was? Or did you just say, book me a show? I told him to book me the nicest venue. I mean, these are illegal speakeasies. Mm -hmm. But the nicest, the nicest, the nicest, the nicest illegal speakeasy. Yes. <laughs> it's going to be. Make it good. A nice little underground Carnegie place. 
called in... The Shimmy Shack. <laughs> Carnegie Hall. Uh, no, that's not very good. Somebody come up with something. Come up with a great name, but it's in Manhattan. <laughs> the Giggle Water. I don't know. Name? That. How good so, is it? So That's very I, fair. I digress. That is a very fair point. These places are so hip, they don't even have names. The mm-hmm. Bath Water. The backwater? The bath water. Oh, the bath water. Yeah, throw the baby out with the bath water. I don't, I don't want to drink in a place. I do. <laughs> that said, it is evening. It's still a nice cold January. Oh, in New York? Oh. Was there anything you all wanted to do with the rest of your evenings? Um, there's a few things I have to take care of before tomorrow. Loosens to tie up and such. But if we are going to do something, I would like to be there so I can move things around. You, we're not going to the Carlisle Estate, right? We're we're going to a show that you invited Erica to. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ignore the fact that he's rolling dice. (laughs) Um, Jackson had mentioned in his rambling letter that there's books in Carlisle's safe. That's what I was going to ask. Is there a way you can use this concert to sway her as an invite to her estate yeah. afterwards? I might have an idea for that, actually. Okay. That's very exciting. It's worth mentioning, in the past, Erica was quite welcoming, um, if a bit prickly. Uh, I, I believe it could be possible to, to finagle our way back into the estate. Especially if you're with us. Well, I'll do what I can. <laughs> do we know who, like, the kind of person that Erica's cup of tea is? Uh, obviously not me. Um, hey, it just makes you more appealing to the people that do find you attractive. That is so fair. Mm-hmm. You can tell, like, Oliver's had this conversation with her before. <laughs> I don't know that there's a particular type of person that Erica prefers other than to say that... Let's say green is her favorite color, perhaps? Um, No, that does whittle it down, because it means you. (laughs) Oh, money. I don't like to boast. I just got it. (laughs) I was referring to money. Mm -hmm. So, definitely. I will say, it's it's not all it's cracked up to be, honestly. I'm, I'm not saying, like, fucking use it to your advantage forevermore, but, like, it, it has if its we, perks. If it we doors. need to sway the lady to open her doors to us, perhaps you could grease some hinges. I'll do what I can. At the moment, I, I don't know that there's anything pressing for tonight. I, I actually need to uh, change into some other clothes and see a man about town for something. Mysterious. What? No, I'm just. I'm going to change into another outfit. And... Like pajamas? Yeah, that's yes. a really weird so, way of saying I'm, that. No, pajamas. That's right. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to put on pajamas. And... So why would you be putting on pajamas to see a, see man, a man about? about now I will say, <laughs> I will say, love. If Adrian was planning on going out, he would probably want to change. What he's saying doesn't sound weird to you. <laughs> Oliver, you're not exactly someone who goes out to speakeasies regularly, so you're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> this is completely fine. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Covered in blood. Just, yeah, what? Huh? I'm um, just giving you a hard time, Adrian. Is it tonight or is it tomorrow? Okay, it's tomorrow. I'm so okay. shit with, with dates. You'll have to forgive me. I have a date with my bed. I'm going to go to sleep. So then, will we meet tomorrow at the... <laughs> How about we oh, I a... like the bathwater. We're sticking with that. Oh. Uh, Shall we plan to meet tomorrow at the bathwater? Sounds good to me. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Very well. Okay. Uh, I drove us, or Gus drove us all here, right? So I presume he'll... I mean, it, from Grand Central Station, pretty much everyone uh, here can get home true. easily. It's walkable. I'm not afraid of a walk. The walk should be afraid of you. (laughs) (laughs) She starts chugging along down a dark sidewalk. I follow like in the world. I follow like ten feet behind her. (laughs) I let her think she's like perfectly independent, and I'm just like making sure you get home safe. So, love, Oliver. You were going home. Yeah. You are going to take care of some things before Mm -hmm. the show tomorrow. 
make sure papers are signed. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ophelia and Nicholas, do, what, are, do you have any plans for the evening, or are you just going to go home? It's been a few days, and I'm already at the station. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to take a train back to Connecticut Okay. and sleep at my house. Okay. You have plenty of time to do so. You live in Connecticut? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. How unfortunate. I know, yeah. gross. That's far. Okay, I'm going to go to the Guggenheim. I'm going to get a cab because I want to look up this father of all bats, this cult leader. Okay. And the bat teeth and poison bats and whatnot. So I'm going to do that. Late night research. Yep, because I can't sleep anyway. (laughs) Oh. Can I add a stop to my... Yeah. I want to stop by my clinic and just see if anybody's there. Okay. I thought you said McDonald's. Actually, give me a luck roll. (laughs) I'm unattended. What's my luck roll? Yeah, no, I leave you. Um, This is going to set the tone for the rest of the night. (gasps) (laughs) I rolled a seven. How how fortuitous. There is no one at your clinic so that you can go get a full night of sleep. Lovely. Adrian, what are you up to? So I don't know if anybody caught caught it because it was pretty subtle, pretty very subtle. But Adrian (laughs) is going to dress up like a superhero <laughs> and go about town looking for crimes to stop. It was <laughs> if you can read between the lines. It was real oh, I subtle. For, I forgot my hat. Where's my hat? Did I leave my Ah. Ha, ha, ha. I got it. It's part of the set now. Part of the set, part of the crew. Much obliged. Can do. Or should I say not Adrian, mm. but the apparition. And the apparition We'll have plenty to do this evening. Oh, snap. Why don't you also give me a luck roll? <laughs> oh. That is a five <gasps> under 70. <laughs> Sharon, I don't feel so good about our rolls. <laughs> <laughs> and it's shifting towards this side of the table. Um, so long as it goes away from him, I'm fine. <laughs> You do have a moderately eventful evening, I will say. You find some petty crime to disperse of. Uh, no, no, no serious harm or uh, any big fights, but you are able to do what you do uh, to make the streets feel a little safer. Nice. Ophelia. Yes. You head over to the Guggenheim, and you're working. Why don't you give me a library use roll? I'm scared. <laughs> you got this. I know. You got a seven and a five. Beat that. Oh. 36 under 75. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, going through. Through the papers, you do find something of interest. More things. It doesn't reference the bat cult. But why don't you go ahead and read that? The whole thing. The whole thing. Uh, the, at least the front. Okay. <laughs> Chapter 8, The Bloody Tongue. Our expedition traveled east across the Rift Valley and into the mountainous highlands of central Kenya. There, Kam- Kamau said he would endeavor to take us to a region where a small cult worshipped the god known as the Bloody Tongue. The members of this cult were reviled by the local tribes in the area. Legend held that the cult of the Bloody Tongue was able to conjure something villages called the Black Wind. It was literal wind, but infused with evil spirits, such that it brought plague, famine, and death upon any in its path. Hmm. The conjuration of the black wind was a rite celebrated by the members of the cult to honor the god of the bloody tongue. I asked Kam- Kamau, Kamau about the god's name, assuming that it was named for some kind of bloodletting or sacrifice carried out by the celebrants, akin to the stuff mutilation we saw carried out in the mad rites of the pain dream sect in Congo. But Kamau was hesitant to speak more about how this cult came to be so known. Rather, he said this was something we should see for ourselves. Stealth was paramount in attempting to witness a rite of the bloody tongue. And in the end, we determined that Kamau and I should go alone, as we'd be less likely to draw the attention of the cultists. Whose thirst for blood sacrifice whose thirst for blood sacrifice is legendary in the region. We traveled two days into the highlands, the mountain 
the mountains growing larger and the trails becoming steeper as we worked our way up from the savannah into the verdure into the verdure of the of the kenya's great mountainous peaks the f- <laughs> the final miles were difficult travel as we needed to stay off the game pass to avoid making ourselves known to the cult members we traversed the side of a low peak and eventually climbed into a large tree which provided a decent but shielded view of a clearing below we covered ourselves with large branches and leaves and waited for nightfall. Kamal reiterated the need for silence if we were successful to bear witness to the cult's rights. <laughs> I don't want to read this. Um, Is it just like profanity? No. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to finish. Yeah. You're good. Um, it's just the word. It's the spell, right. Can you spell Kamal? K-A-M-A-U. Okay. That's what I guessed. Oh, shit. Can, oh. Hmm? Are you sure you don't want to keep reading? Oh, I kind of do. <laughs> keep reading. <laughs> As darkness fell, perhaps a hundred celebrants came to the clearing, many busying themselves in, a build, in building a large bonfire and many more shepherding a group of clearly terrified captives. The captives were forced to stand with their arms and feet as far apart as possible, and in this posture, they were bound to each other, wrist to wrist and ankle to ankle. From where I sat, they looked like they looked a bit like a fence. This was perhaps 20 of them bound in this fashion. A priestess of sorts entered the scene. I was surprised to see that she appeared to be young and had strikingly attractive features. Still, it was clear that the other members of the cult feared her and gave her great deference. To one side of the bonfire sat a group of four drummers, three with large djembe drums, and one with a smaller, higher-pitched drum. When the victims were fully prepared, the, pre- the priestess gave a nod to the drummers who began beating in a frenzied pitch, sounding out a rhythm the likes of which I had never before heard. As the priestess whirled around the firelit circle, chanting dim words from an ancient spell, the cult executioners busied themselves with their screaming sacrifices. As the blood, fo- as the blood flowed, a chill wind sprang up and I felt a flash of fear. The wind had become visible, a black vapor against the gibbous leering moon. And slowly my terror grew as I comprehended the monstrous thing taking form. The corrosive stench of it hinted at vileness beyond the evil. When I saw the great red appendage, which alone constituted the face of the thing, my courage died and I fled unseeing into the night. It was indeed fortunate that the following morning I was found by the ever-capable Kamau, for had the cult members found me, I have no doubt I'd have been among their next victims, being white or no. As we returned to the lowland to meet the others, Kamau told me that the priests and priestesses of the bloody tongue practice a form of magic, which allows them to bring the dead back to life again. And then it goes on to say the, the practice seemed to be in keeping with the voodoo. Voodoo. And that's by Nigel Blackwell. Mm-hmm. From Harvard. Jeez. So the black wind is real. <laughs> and that sucks. Sleep well. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> and you all drift off to sleep or the other activities that you... I'm not sleeping after that. <laughs> get up to. Um, the next day goes by relatively uneventfully unless there's anything anyone would particularly like to do. No, but uneventfully for love means a whole lot different than most people on the day of a show. There's a lot of chaos. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I'm familiar. Nicholas. Yes. Uh, heading over to the asylum where I work. Yeah. Just a quick check in with Patty, the head nurse. Okay. Um, pay her off my usual amount. Okay. Check in. Um, have a good day, and then head out from the morning. Sh- uh, head out from the morning shift to meet up with everyone else. Okay. She lets you know all is well. Okay. Good to know. We'll say. Four, five o'clock, you'll start meeting up. It's January in New York. The sun is getting... <laughs> the sun is definitely... Who are you? <laughs> low in the sky. Adrian shows up in an all-white suit by accident. Wait, that was Adrian? <laughs> I don't know who you're talking about. I would know. The domino mask conceals the identity. <laughs> and you... Start arriving in your own time at the bathwater. Love, you're probably already there. For sure. 
And I am backstage already. I think Oliver shows up way too early. Like, I feel like he, like, goes in, like, realizes it's, like, not even open yet, and is like, God, shit. There's a there's a place nearby to grab yeah. a sandwich. I, I think he, like, has to, like, mm, anxiously sandwich. grab a cup of coffee and, yeah. like, yeah. okay, can I go now? <laughs> Did you notice uh, the second time you go up and knock, the panel slides open. Um, you've all received a password to get in for the evening. Uh, Love called you or messaged you all earlier. Sent a courier with a note. What's the password? Hoopla. <laughs> hoopla? The, the password is hoopla. Amazing. Hoopla. <laughs> Oliver, being the first one there, mm. um, you you practically are coming inside of the house lights are still up. Yeah. They are still setting up. Uh, they're still lighting candles. You see the bartender cleaning, literally cleaning the bar, not just polishing it between servings. Um, you get a couple sideways looks for being there so early. Um, and then they go back to ignoring you. I go find love. Love is backstage at this point, which you will not be allowed back into unless love comes to collect you. Love is actually pretty busy right now mm -hmm. <laughs> in then her dressing room. I have fun time staring down with whoever's stopping me <laughs> from going. Yep. Um, and then... At, you, you're there for a good 15, 20 minutes until more patrons start wandering in. Fine. Fine. Uh, and then I become the biggest wallflower you've ever seen. You vanish mm -hmm. into a booth. Do you get a drink? You know, otherwise, no. But this is my least favorite place to be and my least favorite place to be seen. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Okay. Definitely. Uh, by the time you guys have come here, it almost looks like you at a funeral. Okay. Um, who would arrive next? I'll say I arrive next. Okay. Um, and Nicholas has just a single rose with a note on it. Mm -hmm. It says, break a leg. Okay. Oh. And just says to someone who's working there to make sure that love gets that before the show. Uh, it does get taken and passed backstage. Uh, love, uh, you are mid prep and there's a knock at the dressing room door. Um... Love stops what she's doing as preparation, which was standing in front of the mirror, staring at herself <laughs> <laughs> and looking at her body covered on the left side with scars mm -hmm. from Peru. And it kind of jars her out of whatever she was doing. And she rushes over to the door with a very sheer rope. And kind of opens the door. Yes? Uh, this was uh, left for you. What is it? It's a rose. Oh. And hands it to you. Thanks. Did you sign your note? I did. Okay. And it says, break a leg, Nicholas. Oh. <laughs> she places it very delicately on the vanity table. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And she just kind of places her hand on the mirror as she's shaking. Break the leg. And then she'll slowly start putting the rest of her makeup on. Love, do me a favor. Mm -hmm. Reduce your stability by one. <laughs> I didn't mean to. Oh, it's not your fault. Mm, okay. Not you. Not your fault. Um... I would say probably Ophelia arrives next. I arrive on time. And Adrian arrives fashionable to late. As I bring nothing but do. myself because I am the present. <laughs> <laughs> then I get a drink. Absolutely. Oh, also, all of their tabs are mine. Whatever Aww. anyone goes to pay, they say, oh, no, 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 you are a friend of loves. It's on the house. Adrian can pay for his own drink. <laughs> <laughs> Not him. <laughs> Adrian. Um, yeah, I'll arrive late. I I imagine like I'll pull up in my, you know, awesome car and get out and I I assume <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. Gus has like a bunch of roses, like mm -hmm. a dozen, and I'm like, Gus, I don't 
Oh, wait, for, for for love, yes. Of course. And then I'll grab him, and I assume he just grunts. He's just like, sir. Uh, and then, yeah, I'll make my way in. I'll, I mean, okay. I'll say the password. I'll tip the guy who took the password from me. Hoopla. Um, <laughs> yes, I do say hoopla. Um, I drop, I mean, I'm not as as thoughtful as Nicholas. I give them the, the roses to like a, a bartender or something. So could you make sure that those get to love at some point? And then I just kind of schmooze. Um, yeah. I assume <laughs> while schmoozing, I will be like, I don't know if you've heard about the, these these stories about someone dashing about at night, jumping over rooftops. Have you heard anything about that? And <laughs> the first person you talk to has no idea what you're about. <laughs> to the point it actually kind of annoys you. <laughs> like, seriously, you, you haven't heard any of these rumors. Oh, darling, I don't pay attention to the news. This is beneath me. <sighs> well, perhaps you should. <laughs> and I'll move on to, s- <laughs> to someone else. Amazing. Uh, and you do. You have people, you do strike up a few conversations about it. As you're moving around, you do notice uh, Oliver in the shadows, keeping to himself. Um, Nicholas and Ophelia, do you meet up with each other? Do you stay separate? Yep. I'll say I'll keep an eye out for Ophelia. Yeah. And then once we make eye contact, make our way over to the looming specter that is Oliver. Okay, so probably around the time where Adrian is arriving is when you would be making your way over to Oliver, uh, drink or no drink in hand. Adrian, you notice them all together. Uh, I don't, do you go sit with them or do you, you see a lot of other people you know as well. Has has Erica arrived yet? You don't see Erica yet. Um, I will I will schmooze my way <laughs> over to them, you know, just shaking hands and mm-hmm. moving moving slowly over to them. I assume I've got a, let's say I've got a martini. Um, does everyone have a drink already? <laughs> yeah. For the rest of you, you do see Adrian saying hi to quite a number of people. Yeah, Oliver's just sitting in the booth with, like, neat scotch. Get at least three fingers of it. And it's around that time that the band starts to play. They do a, 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 a number or two before love is introduced. It would be the typical thing of the time, so you have some time to chat. What do you talk about? I don't know if you've all heard about this <laughs> gentleman jumping about rooftops. No, I'm not going to do that. Never mind. <laughs> no, you should do it. No, do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. I guess it's out there. So... Have all of you heard about this ghost-like figure, apparently, jumping over rooftops at night, apparently? I've heard about that figure. Yeah, what, what have you heard? I think he's crazy. Really? Like, mm. no respectable person is going to do that. Interesting. He's <laughs> bananas. Well, he's you know. cuckoo. We've been dealing with cultists that murdered our friends. Any person that goes jumping across fire escapes in weird costumes... I don't, I'm, I'm not a big fan. Yeah, you know, that, that is a, a good point. But, you know, perhaps this person, this uh, man or woman, I, I, I haven't heard, is trying to, to do some good. Um, yeah, maybe they're part of a good death cult. Uh, well, we, we do know that there is darkness that exists in this world that not everybody's prepared to face. But that's uh, why there's cops. Yeah. How, how useful have the cops been? I mean, been? that's fair. <laughs> in, True, but I don't. I don't against. think that some guys should be walking around on like high on the high ropes, high tight, whatever. Yeah. Like, what if he slips and falls? Then yeah, like, then he's dead, and then cops have to clean up his mess. Quite an exciting way to go, don't you think? I I'll think s- I prefer in bed, surrounded by family. Yeah. Mm. Well, to each his own. Not. That, I mean, I don't. I don't want to die that way. That's how I also want to go. But, but this. This. Man or woman, I, I don't know, apparently has a, a different idea of how to live. This band is very good, am I right? <laughs> and they are. They're actually quite t- talented. Uh, a song goes, another one. Five minutes to stage, Miss LaRue. Thank you, thank you. <clears throat> And she starts doing the full Mm -hmm. range of her vocals. Mm -hmm. (laughs) She breaks a couple glasses. (laughs) Why don't you give me a uh, roll, actually? Um, There should be a performance singing roll in there Mm -hmm. somewhere. Nice. Oh, wow. On that that. sheet of yours. 
Oh, wonderful. It's a 25 under a 75. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you absolutely break a couple of glasses. <sighs> I'm ready. And she makes her way towards the stage. <laughs> you make your way up to the wings of the stage, waiting for the song to finish. And you, from your vantage point, in a shadowed balcony overlooking the dance floor and the stage, make out one Erica Carlisle sitting with a drink with two men sitting with her. Scandalous. Her, uh, her like, anxiety over whatever's happening, the moment she sees Erica... It goes away. Yeah. And her beautiful smiling face comes on again as mm -hmm. she takes the first step onto stage waving. As the band is winding down, you step out. There's a cheer from the crowd. Many of these people know who Love LaRue is. And... And... What song are you going to perform for everyone? She walks up to the microphone and... She leans in very romantically to the microphone, and she says, Good evening, my friends. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. I, I've thought for a while of how to word this, but a dear friend of mine once told me, If you're too scared to lose sight of the shores you're standing on, you'll never find new ones. So tonight, in addition to a concert, if your wallets are um, particularly gracious, I would like to announce the founding of the Roger Foundation, meant to serve all those aspiring adventurers and explorers. Now, please enjoy this song by me, and it's called Love, Love, Hope. I will allow you to make a psychoanalysis roll. I have never been prouder of her <laughs> than in this moment. Who's Roger? Roger Brother. Carlyle. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Oh. This is the best that could have gone, but it's a nine o or yeah, it's a nine over one. I'm not great at psychoanalysis, oh, but oh. I'm great at psychology. Hey. Mm. Psychoanalysis is the one that would be for like reading someone's People. facial expressions. Uh, that's close. Mm -hmm. uh, Erica looks stone faced. Mm. Very difficult to read. That's fine. Everyone loves me. <laughs> and what song do you perform? Uh, love, Love, Hope. An original. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fantastic performance. I'm not going to make you roll again earlier. <laughs> thank you, thank you. You sing a few songs, mm -hmm. and then the band, you know, it's a good time for a break. band can play a few without you, and then you come up for a, a second set. Do you want to go visit your friends? Do you want to go visit Erica? What would you like to do? As I'm leaving the stage, can I see my friends in the audience? You can, yes. Uh, at Between some of the songs, they uh, dim the blinders. Cool. So you are able to see across. The, there's plenty of people dancing, plenty of people sitting and drinking. And you can see your friends sitting you know, kind of halfway back against the side uh, in a booth that Oliver obviously chose. Perfect. Uh, Love tries to look directly into Oliver's eyes just very passively and then blows a kiss up to where Erica Carlisle is sitting. Okay. I do not meet your eyes. <laughs> I'm okay. so not happy to be here. But I will say um, for all of you, it is obvious that she gets your attention and then directs your attention up to that balcony. From where you are sitting, you cannot tell who is sitting up there. And then I'll walk off stage and I'm gonna make my way towards I'm gonna, I have to check in with Adrian. I have to bring Adrian with me to Erica. Mm. She scares. That makes me. sense. Uh, there is a there is a stagehand standing right at the bottom of the stairs that you step down with a drink for you. Oh, thank you. Could you do Could you do me the biggest favor in the world, doll? No. 
Will you go grab the four people who are on my list other than Erica Carlisle? Of course, ma'am. Thank you. And a moment later, a the stagehand approaches your table. Uh, sirs, madams, uh, Miss Love would like to speak with you briefly. Lead the way. Get out of a crowd, lead the way. Uh, and the stagehand leaves the, leads the four of you over to Love. She's standing there with two drinks now. Who wants a drink? <laughs> <laughs> Just immediately. <laughs> it's always Oliver. Uh, Erica Carlisle's here. Um, I hope that stunt didn't make her mad. There is an actual foundation. I mean... Cheers. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we should... We could probably pop up there and talk to her. I figured it may not be couth for all of us to be there, but I wanted at least you and I here. I think that makes sense. Wonderful. It's a team up. By the way, love, I have to say, that, that was marvelous. Oh my god, thank you. <laughs> I was... I knew it was going to go my way. Uh, Adrian, can you give me an intelligence roll? Oh, <laughs> I don't know, can I? Probably not. That is a... That is a 72 over 45. Okay. Uh, you not can't remember way. if you've ever seen Love perform before. Okay. But it, yes, it was quite well, good. Well, Femi remembers. But, uh, <laughs> yes, uh, you have. Not. Yeah. Love, can I have your autograph? Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> Do you Thank have you anything so much. else? Um, no. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Could I do a, I know I can see it, but can I do a, like a spot hidden to recognize that her wig is not being worn? Oh, it, her hair color is completely different. Okay. So, yeah, and the style is completely different. It's going up. Yeah. <laughs> I meant to ask about that. Oh, yeah. I, when I'm performing, I don't like to wear the wig. Um, it's kind of a privacy thing if I'm honest, because this is the hairstyle of Love LaRue. The other hairstyle is of Love LaRue. Mm -hmm. You know Fair. what I mean? No. Yeah. So you dress differently to sort of... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Dang it, I can do it. So you dress differently to take on sort of a, a different persona. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's pretty easy. It's like any stage acting or ow... There's a bar here. <laughs> um, it's like any stage acting or anything like that. You just, even if your name is the same, if you look different, you're different. Let me tell you, somebody whose hair is kind of weird, <laughs> it, if you change your hair, people will not recognize you. Yeah. Even if it's just from brown to black it, and from up to down. I think that's the biggest thing, honestly. Yeah. Anyway, we should get going. You got this. What? Where do you want us? Oh, Where we can, can cause the least amount of trouble. Drinks. Ah, uh, the bar. Y'all can get drinks at the bar. You can. I'm sure people are going to be more than willing to bring you all drinks to my dressing room, which is right over there. And she points to a door with a golden heart on of it, on it instead of a star. Um, it's right over there. You just have to. Open the door and be Oliver's like... Oliver's already gone. <laughs> like, he's already in the room. With, Oliver knows With, with granted permission, they let you back towards the dressing room, and you go sit back there instead of in the crowd. Um, Nicholas, Ophelia? I'm actually going to stay out in the crowd and just people watch. Not okay. try to smoosh, um, yeah. but just get a sense of who all's moving around in here. Okay. I'm at the bar and drinking... The bar. Drinking away the black tentacles behind my eye. <laughs> <laughs> Valid. Which leaves Adrian in love to head over. There, You see a roped off stairway, but the moment that you approach it, the bouncer moves the rope out of the way for both of you. Oh my God, thank you. You're so kind. Ma'am, excellent performance as always. Oh, thank you. I tip him <laughs> if he takes it. He, he, he politely declines. Love looks from down the stairs at the person declining the tip like, Take the tip. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be an ass. As she continues up the stairs. <laughs> and at the top of the stairs is a small balcony. Hmm. Uh, VIP, obviously. 
and you see a uh i wouldn't say small stature but not as not as uh somewhere between you and ophelia in stature uh blonde woman uh let me just flip over to her section here give me a moment <clears throat> Young, blonde, apparently very wealthy. Um, much like you love natural beauty. Uh, very clear, pale skin, um, carefully applied makeup, very fashionable European clothing, um, and similar to you, uh, stylish, short, cropped, curly hair. Um, and she stands. She says, love, darling, you are wonderful. Thank you so much for inviting me. Oh, my goodness. Of course. I wanted, I wanted everything to be a surprise for you. Um, I hope I didn't upset you or anything. Oh, with the, the foundation yes, yes. for my brother. Yes. Uh, it is certainly appreciated. Oh, good. And you do not need to roll. Uh, she does seem annoyed. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have yet another surprise for you. I, um, I'm actually close friends with this man right here. And she moves the curtain. And she, <laughs> she goes, Adrian Beaumont, how are you? Erica, just when I thought I could not be further delighted this evening, here you are. And she extends her hand. Okay, I'll kiss it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, was the, that was the way she extended Excellent. it. All right. <laughs> uh, she says... Please, please, have a seat if you have some time before your next set. Oh, of course. I came up here Would special. Do we? Uh, do I recognize either of the people flanking her, or are they just... No, but um, as you are sitting, she says, uh, and do forgive me, uh, allow me to introduce, this is... I have to find him. Bear with me. <laughs> no. Uh, this is okay. Uh, Bradley Gray, he's actually my attorney, but he's a dear friend. Oh, wow. and the the other gentleman, he, this is my bodyguard. Hello, bodyguard. His name is Sam. Sam, Sam, hello, Sam. He grunts. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is a pleasure to meet you both, Brad and Sam. Uh, pleasure to meet you as well, Miss Larue. You you are quite talented. Oh, pish, uh, the posh. the smaller statured uh, man she introduced as Bradley Gray says. So, what what in what inspired you to reach out to me? Well, I've been moved in recent recent months. Um, I'm not sure if you know, but I took a vacation a while back. And it was quite harrowing. I almost didn't get past customs. It was quite annoying. My bags were so heavy. And I just wanted that sense of adventure to be out there in the world. Of course. And I was touched by your brother's passing. Yes. Uh, Roger's... Roger's adventures were certainly ended, unfortunately. Of course. And, and I know from what conversations I've had with Roger, I, I would hate for his death to mean the loss of that spark in New York City, that spark of adventure and exploration. I'm sure there are plenty of other fool, adventurous uh, folks who would take up that call. I don't think that his misfortunes will deter too many. Mm. But it is certainly very sweet of you. Of course, of course. And I also, I know we haven't been very close, but I wanted to kind of extend a connection to you. Because I quite, I mean, look at you. I quite like you. You're beautiful, you're intelligent, and you're quite funny. <laughs> I would love to be your friend, and uh, the way Adrian speaks of you, it... <sighs> How do you two know each other? That's an interesting story. We actually, speaking of adventures, we sort of met each other on uh, <laughs> an adventure, perhaps a misadventure in the past. Yes. Um, we actually came into contact, well, breaking for just a second, we presume she knows um, Jackson, Elias, right? Like Jackson, do we know that? 
Like you he's... actually, amongst the people that Jackson mentions and what his the research that you found both between his paper, what he said to you, and Kensington, does not imply that he ever spoke with Erica. He may have tried to, but with as reclusive as she is, it's highly probable she turned him down. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, we met on a bit of a misadventure in Peru. Yeah. <laughs> quite a, I, I'll spare you the details. It's really quite <laughs> quite exciting. Perhaps I'll share it with you another time. Peru is a lovely country. It's, it's gorgeous. Too much walking. I will say, unfortunately, um, another acquaintance we, we met uh, there, more than an acquaintance, really, uh, became a close friend. Mm. Um, he seems to have, well, we've, we've lost him. Yes. As well. I'm sorry to hear that. Very recently. I, I, thank you. I, I don't, I'm not sure if you're, if you know the name Jackson Elias. No, that doesn't sound too familiar. Go ahead, both of you, roll psychoanalysis. <laughs> yeah. Please, I want to read her. So we need to roll like a zero, uh, a one? If you have no d dots in psychoanalysis, yes. Why did I bother? I mean, I'm, I'm wasting this good. That's a 17. Damn. <laughs> that was good. That was but, so like, good. Jesus. I got a 71. Did, did, Adrian, is that lower than your spot hidden? Yes, my spot hidden is a 52. So while Erica doesn't react, Bradley Gray does to the name. Mm. You don't catch the motive behind the reaction. You don't catch the emotion behind it. But he certainly recognizes that name when you say mm -hmm. it. But er Erica does not seem to. Um, I will. <laughs> I don't know how subtly I can. I can, like, catch your eye and, mm -hmm. and look over to. Which one did you say it was, Bradley or Sam? Bradley. Okay. The lawyer. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we're sitting. Remind me. Body language wise, mm -hmm. it's Erica bodyguard to her left, Bradley to her right on a seated area. So it's more like, so there's, there's, you know, opera boxes. Yes. They'll have comfortable chairs with like end tables. So like Erica is sitting basically in the center of, of the balcony with a small table next to her for a drink. Okay. The bodyguard is standing behind her. Bradley is sitting in another chair to her left. She has turned to face two more chairs that are sitting kind of equally next to each other towards her. So it's like she is front and center to you. Bradley is slightly to her left and slightly behind her. The bodyguard is just kind of leaning back because cool. you neither of you seem to be a threat. So he's not like actively ready to jump in front of her. He's more watching the stairs, if anything. So, yeah, I'll, I'll say, yeah, we, we unfortunately lost him. But he uh, actually he was. He was a, a writer, a, a rather prolific one. Uh, Bradley, you look like a studious type. Have you perhaps uh, read any any books of his? Unfortunately, most n very little of my reading is for pleasure. Uh. Well, they're actually academic books. Really? Yes. Um, oh, good gracious. What were the names? I'm not much death? of an academic myself, as you can probably tell. So I'm not sure what the names were, but they were... Beautiful. The Black Power. Huh. The Black Power, The Hungry Dead. Man, you guys are good. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Uh, you you rattle off it. a couple of the titles, and that's when you kind of catch Erica's expression sour. Oh, those sound like some of the books that Roger was reading before he got that harebrained adventure in his head. Huh. Well, Erica, I'm almost loath to bring it up. Uh, to put a poll on the evening, but we're we're trying to do some research into what may have happened to our friend because we don't really know. And it appears yeah. he himself was doing some research into the expedition wherein your brother was lost. Really? Interesting. What I, I bring this up because it it somewhat appears that possibly it was his research into this that led to his death. Right. And Go if, ahead and give me a persuade roll. Is there any oh, way I could boy, help, help him? Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> dang. I, I, didn't know that. I was going How to How about add... fast talk? I don't know. Oh. I just, I didn't know that was a skill. No, I, I'm, um. I'll allow charm. 
I do have charm. I know you do. <laughs> I also Kapow. have charm. Um, oh. And if people are hunting oh, wait, no. down oh, man. adventurous, rich that's okay. people. No, I, I saw the zero and got excited, but that's okay. It's a 50 under 61. Okay. That's still a success. <sighs> Sam? Ma'am. And she gestures towards the stairwell and he moves to make sure no one is eavesdropping. <sighs> Listen. Mm. Honestly, I'm kind of fucking glad my brother's dead because he didn't even have the dignity to die in a normal way. He just had to go off on this some adventure and get torn to pieces. Mm. I'm kind of sick of all this shit. What do you want to know? Uh... She doesn't seem mad at you, but it's clear that she was like, fuck this. <laughs> I love her now. <laughs> well, actually, Erica, if you wouldn't mind, I believe there are a few books in Roger's collection that... I threw out most of his things. Did you... Op- Honestly, if you want to know more about all of that, I would rather have that conversation at my home mm. where I can't accidentally be overheard. See, you are so smart. I knew I liked you. Why don't we, why don't you head up to the estate with me after your, the rest of your show? I Erica, would that love that. is so gracious of you. I, I know you don't open your home to just anyone. Yes, well... Frankly, the, if I don't have to ever talk about Roger's stupidity again for the rest of my life, I would be much more grateful. But let me handle that. But your intentions seem honest. And if it can help you find out what happened to your friend, I'll tell you what happened while I was over there and what I know. That's perfect. That's wonderful. I'll, uh, I'll do one of these. I kind of take her hand and, and pat it, you know, and look her in the eyes mm-hmm. and just kind of a nod. This means a great deal to us. Okay. Hopefully your friend wasn't as stupid as Roger was. Mm-hmm. Well. It remains to be seen. <laughs> oh, uh, re- real quick about coming to the estate. Um, my brother is actually at the show and he can't go home by himself. W- would it be okay if he accompanied with us? The little, uh, the, the scrawny, right. white-haired. Exactly. I remember him. Yeah, sure. And then I believe um, My Adrian knew... bodyguard <laughs> is... No, uh... You have a, you have an entourage with We've... you. I would expect Wonderful. no less love. Yes, they may all come. Thank you. You know, I never know how to broach the do you, subject. Do you, do you remember where the house is? I do. Okay, just after after the rest of your sh- show, please just come on up. I may leave a little early to to make sure that it's ready to receive guests. Absolutely. Not because I'm not having fun. I still do appreciate the invitation. Can I roll? I know it's not going to work, but can I roll a psychoanalysis to see if she's actually having fun? Sure. That was so close. It was 41 over 1. <laughs> you saw that one and I you did. Were well yeah because it was like <laughs> yeah, right. one roll away from being a one <laughs> she's definitely gone a little stone faced again mm. so you can't tell have a wonderful rest of your evening we will see you later that sounds good and she kind of bows and is gone okay so you slip away she, Erica smiles and nods to you I give uh, a tip I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I will, uh, throwing money at whatever no, doesn't I will, move. I will. Is she drinking? Because she is drinking. Okay, I'll, I'll offer to get her next drink. So okay. okay. Thank you. She drinks a lot. She's on my tab. <laughs> I will say. The rest of your set. Why don't you give me another uh, performance roll? Okay. Twenty three under seventy five. Even better than the first. Love and... is singing like oh wolfy and like I love the singer about. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. 
Yeah, I think uh, the Restless show is astounding. There's no such thing as laser light shows yet, but it feels like that. <laughs> <laughs> and her um, final song. Um, thank you again, everyone, for coming out tonight. Uh, I have one final song for you all, um, as my throat is getting quite tired. So let's end it on a slower note so we can all walk home safely and not fumble around. This one is called Our Hope in the Dark. And it's a very, very slow song about losing hope. But knowing that it will eventually return to you. Sending the Simone sugar in my bowl. <laughs> That's what I thought of. Can I hear yeah. her songs from the dressing room? Oh, yeah. I... I think like Oliver hears that song and just like I look around I see like one of her like furs and I shove it under the door so I don't hear it anymore and I sit back down okay the sound still gets to you a little bit I think I've had too many drinks to care <laughs> and for the rest of you it's quite a lovely performance huh. And when you're done, unless there's anything anyone would like to do, Gus is waiting to drive you up to Westchester County, about half an hour north of the city. Oh. I hate that song. I'm sorry. It's. I was singing about Not, a man who died. Yeah. I'm sorry. Not you singing that song. I hate that song. It... It's fine. It's over. I'm out of here. And I'm, like, already halfway to the car. Like, I don't look at anybody. I'm just so happy to get out of this space. Where are we going? Oh, we're going to Erica Carlisle's home. We're going to a third location. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there'll probably a, be a sub-location within the home. <laughs> so does that count as a full separate location? I had, like, five glasses of wine. I'm... What's happening? Um... Erica Carlisle was actually extremely receptive. We really didn't have to convince her of anything at all. Um, she has two men with her, a bodyguard named Sam. Very nice, very quiet. And another person named Brad. I love this for us, okay. Yeah. It's quick, I've, I'm not sure I've seen this side of you before. I'm drunk. Yeah. It's, she loves poisons. It's, it's enjoyable. How, how do you feel? Good, I'm drunk. <laughs> Did you want some morphine? Mor uh, no, no. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Fine, Would that I'll be like medicine? Don't, don't, don't back we're not. Yeah. Okay, yeah, morphine. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Thank you. I think you have much rat to be babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> not considered off. medicine back then. <laughs> That's close. That's no. Close. <laughs> I'm gonna open the cyanide shelf in my <laughs> in my car. <laughs> Some arsenic to tide me over. It's for headaches. God. Some arsenic to tide me over. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, what that bitter almond drink <laughs> that we've been having? <laughs> oh, good. The car's here. And you load in, give Gus the address, and he drives you north. Um, on your way, you do notice that glimpse of Sing Sing off in the distance, kind of looming over the countryside. Reminder of uh, someone else you want to talk to. But on that thought while we're driving, mm -hmm. can we do a quick brainstorm of how we're going to interview him? Mm. Can we just walk into a prison and say, hey, we want to talk to this guy? I've never tried to walk in. You and I probably could. Uh, we use this place as like the boogeyman for people who are pretending to be criminally insane. So I may know someone actually. Yeah. That's a guess. And I mean, not to throw my title around, but usually when you present someone with a doctorate, they don't say no. Usually. I've been yet to be proven wrong. We'll see how my luck goes. Well, I'd say it's worthwhile to call ahead rather than simply show up. And but uh, it sounds like a plan. Sounds like a tomorrow problem. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a tomorrow Oliver problem. We've got a Olufemi has a stupid question. Is Sing Sing Alcatraz? 
Are those the same thing? No, they're not the same thing. Okay. Um, Alcatraz is in San Francisco. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, okay. But they they have they have similar reputation. Mm -hmm. But it is the it is the Alcatraz uh, of New York. The... Yes. <laughs> sure. Yes. <laughs> That's yes. what the t-shirts say. Gotcha. <laughs> the Alcatraz of the East Coast. Visit Sing Sing, the Alcatraz of New York. <laughs> I went to prison okay. and all I got was this orange t-shirt. <laughs> gotcha. All right. Sorry. Just for my own edification here. Mm -hmm. You arrive after some conversation and some relaxing at a th elegant three-story mansion. 12-foot wrought iron fence topped with sharpened finials surrounding it and two armed guards at a gatehouse. As, nice. your, as your car pulls up, one of them flags, Gus rolls down the window, has a brief conversation, rolls his window up, leans back. Uh, sir, they would like a word? Certainly. Do you roll your window down? Yeah. Uh, yes, you, uh, is this the, um... Hello. Party with Miss Love LaRue? Yes, LaRue that's Beaumont me. and Associates. Excellent. Party. All right. Uh, one moment, please. Of course. And they step away. Oh, I thought we were in trouble. <laughs> uh... And you see uh, the gate open, and as Gus pulls in, anyone paying attention will also notice more armed guards with dogs roaming the grounds. German Shepherds? Uh, yeah, German Shepherds, Rottweilers, Yeah, back, back in this day, they would have been using more Rottweilers. Mm -hmm. Puppy. I wonder if we can pet... Them. I was just about to go like head down. <laughs> and Gus pulls up towards the front, says, Sir, I'll be waiting here. See if I can get you something inside. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> what does that mean? No, like it's a, just a like thing a we have. <laughs> no. Yeah, like Napkins? Yeah. A drink? An ashtray you've stolen? <laughs> Gus, Gus gets it. He, oh. He and I. When do I tell them about this? Do I just... Whenever you want to. Before... That we, we can say that you told them about it on the drive? Yeah, okay, that. Yes. Mm, I'm sober now. Who's <laughs> Nigel Blackwell, by the way? Uh, a writer. Would I know any of his work? No, not not for you. Uh, Ophelia would be more likely to be familiar. Um, this is from Harvard. Or perhaps anyone who did any... That's right. Doctors aren't allowed to read Harvard. <laughs> anyone who did any occult research after the adventures in Peru may have stumbled across the name, but it wouldn't be as familiar. Gotcha. Heard. Okay. <laughs> I will say, as you approach, the door opens. And love, you hear a familiar voice saying, please come in. It's Sam. No, it is the butler that you spoke oh. to on the phone. <laughs> Is he taller than me? No. He is actually short. He's a short, roundish man. How old is he? Uh, probably in his 60s. <laughs> so I Fester love Adam. More similar to Fester than Lurch, yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes. That ditch, please. Love said that out loud. When the name, like when the sound of the voice came, she turned to Ophelia and said, "It's Sam," and then she turned back and saw it was not Sam, and she went, "Oh," <laughs> and walks in. Uh, please, may I take your coats, hats? Just starts disrobing. Yep, and she he, has he so many. He takes on. all of it, hangs it up, and says, "Please follow me," and leads you through uh, a lavishly decorated mansion to a library where there is a fire going and Erica is sitting with Bradley and a different bodyguard. Aww. How many does she have? Bring back Sam. <laughs> Several. <laughs> Several? Uh, I think at, one, at some point after the coat check, uh, Love takes Oliver by the crook of the arm mm -hmm. just to kind of like reassure him. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Because love can feel that he feels out of place. Like you definitely notice he's been fidgeting way yeah. more with his outfit. He's every reflective surface they've passed, he's kind of stopped to make sure that everything's mm. nice. 
that everything's the way that he wants to be presented. And Nicholas takes a little bit more of a closer presence to Adrian to act as that bodyguard persona. Mm. Okay. Okay. Before five of you enter the library, there's a nice couch with some extra chairs pulled over and Erica gestures and she says, welcome. Does she get up? Uh, she does not stand. Oh, okay. oh, I should have brought an alcohol. She is currently drinking a glass of brandy. Um, and you do see a small bar uh, nearby. Is it? Uh, I, I'm not sure if it's overly familiar to like walk over to her and give, like, give her an air kiss or something, or put a hand on her shoulder, whatever, whatever social protocol would dictate <laughs> in this moment. Don't do that. No, no, nope, it wouldn't be overly familiar. Uh, you do see the bodyguards take a half step forward, but she gestures. I approach her as well, and I says, do I'm that. not hugging you too. <laughs> <laughs> Nice to see you again, Erica. <laughs> you as well. You could tell. You could tell the pause was trying to remember your name. Yeah, there's. Huh. I feel like they've met each other all of like mm -hmm. one time, and it was like back when Oliver was like rushing around, like beginning of med school, mm -hmm. and it was like for two seconds, and then they went their separate ways. Yeah, you could tell that it was the pause of. Do I know this person's name? No, I can't remember it. Never mind. You too, friend. <laughs> Erica, I'm sorry. Do do allow me to introduce uh, my friends and associates. This is uh, Nicholas Porter. Porter, right? <laughs> Nicholas Porter, Miss Ophelia Click, and uh, Doctor Oliver West, who I'm, I believe you've met. We, we've we've met. We've yes. met. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet all of you. Uh, you were all friends with your late friend. Yes. 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 That's, that's correct. I'm very sorry to hear about that. Was. You mentioned he was an author. Yeah. That wasn't the murder that I read about in the paper, was it? Unfortunately. Dreadful. Absolutely Quite. dreadful. Joe, you remember that, yes? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hello, Joe. Miss. So I, said, I, I was hoping to, to spare you the, the grisly details, but I suppose there they are in, in black and white. No, no, it's fine. So you wanted to know more about Roger? Yes. I don't really know what else to tell you. I mean, ran around half a fool after that woman came here. Ended up running off to Africa, getting his chopped up. Apologies, Erica. I, I'm afraid we've missed a step. A uh, woman? Oh, it's... Uh, this African woman came over, fascinated and mysticized him and drug him off halfway across the world. Do you by any chance remember her name? Uh, Benet. It, it was Benet, something Benet. Okay. Uh, B-U-N-A-Y. Spelled that wrong. I mm, figured yeah. you did. I was spelling it like Benet Brown. <laughs> I don't know. She Half the time I can't spell my own name. Appreciate it. She was unruly. And I feel, I think, my brother was already troubled. Oh, dear. And so it didn't make it matters any better. And then I sent him off to talk with my doctor, and that made things worse somehow. And was she from Kenya, where the expedition was? I think so, yeah. Okay. Was the relationship they had, was it... Sorry, you'll have to excuse me. I think I had one too many drinks back at the bar. The was it sexual? I was going to put it more towards romantic, but yeah. But I it? can only assume. Oh. You think that he run off with her... Because he loved her, or did he run off with her because he was in love with the idea of adventure? Roger said the woman was queenly and a priestess and made all of these grand gestures about how important she was. And I think she was using him for his money, for what little he had left at that point. A priestess of, of, of what? Oh, I think that was all just in his head. But... Just out of curiosity, um, you know, in my research, and I, I believe in 
next line of work, previous line of work before you became Mr. Beaumont's bodyguard. Mm-hmm. Um, shared hallucinations aren't something that are as uncommon as you'd think. Shared hallucinations? Yeah, it's a, a wild phenomenon that if one person has a hallucination, sometimes uh, like a disease, it'll catch. Did you ever hear the people who dance themselves to death in France? Oh. I, I I I've heard I've heard of it. Yes, it's 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 a, it a, a mass psychological stories. phenomenon. But uh, if you don't mind, just for my mm-hmm. professional opinion, what did she talk about? Like, what did he talk about that she was? Any particular names or rituals that she? Oliver, thought of? I didn't listen much when she talked. That's fair. I will say Roger got it into his head that he needed to go on this grand expedition to Africa. And at first I encouraged it, if only to realize that the tales that that woman was telling him were a bunch of mumbo jumbo. But I sent him to talk to my doctor, Dr. Houston, and he somehow convinced Robert to go with him and help fund this what crazy expedition. He gathered up a whole bunch of other people and well, you know what happened after that. And what happened after that? They went to Kenya and they got No, 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 no. After that, do you think? I've heard rumors at least. I hate to bring this up, but I heard rumors of sightings of him. When? In the speakeasy. You didn't hear them talking about it after I said the Roger Foundation? I don't know what you're talking about, dear. Oh, it must have been in the balcony seating. I I just heard a couple people, people talking. People seeing Roger after he died. Yes? Oh, no, he's dead. Oh. You yourself went to... I did. Wonderful. Do you mind me asking if you're fine with it, mm-hmm. what you saw? My brother and his friends dismembered and bits and pieces of them scattered all over the place? Yes. Oh, sorry. She just kind of holds the empty glass out and Joe takes it, walks over, refills it, and brings it back and puts it in her hand. Oliver shuts up. <laughs> Love shuts up. <laughs> <laughs> I think both the siblings just <laughs> drink. Uh this is this is not Adrian. This is Olufemi again. Refresh my memory. Do we are there? Um, is there a diary about the expedition or anything like that? I, I forget. We got There's a not newspaper a clip. Diary, but there are newspaper clippings and okay. various writings nothing... that Jackson Elias put together. Okay, but nothing written by um, Roger. Not that you know that of. Now, okay. That's like the chapter where they found <clears throat> the bodies. Kind of confusing though. Miss Carlisle, how has your business been running without Roger? Are you faring well? Now that I'm in control of the estate, yes, we're doing great. Roger almost bankrupted us. What was he? He sank all of his money on this expedition, or was that before? Even before it, he's just an idiot. I will Absolutely say, no yeah. business sense. It. We're doing fine now, thank you for asking. Well, men usually are. But it took a lot of work for me to get it back up there, i tell you that. I notice uh, you appear to have many more employees on the grounds than uh, than previously. There was a break-in. I, I increased our security staff afterwards. After I got back from finding out, confirming what happened to my brother, uh, there was a break in. Some people tried to actually this room. Goodness, what was anything taken? Go ahead and give me a luck roll. Oops, luck on it. Uh, Yours are the only dice I can't like. Yeah, watch. not immediately. I'd like to push that. I got a seventy-two over seventy. Yeah, generally good for lucky. It. Oh, I 
shuffled around a lot. That is a... That is worse. <gasps> Nuts. That's an 84. And I'll have... Oh, you can't push luck, actually. Okay. So oh, okay. It doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. So I, will, I, won't, I won't count that against you. I'm sorry. I blanked for a minute there. Um, no worries. We should probably we should probably just do the whole thing over again since we messed up the rules. I'm just gonna go ahead. And... <laughs> no, she she just kind of says, "No, they didn't get anything. I don't think they knew where to look." As she mentions around the room, though, can we look to see if there's any uh, African architecture? Go ahead, and sculptures? anyone who would like to give me a spot hidden roll. I was gonna look at the faces of the guards, see if they. There's only like, one react. guard in the room. Oh. I wanted, but you can. Yeah, I was about to say, I want to look and... Give me a psychoanalysis roll. <laughs> oh, okay. I have something else I'm looking for. Okay, hold on. Give me one second. Go ahead, Ophelia. Can I remember this um, this paragraph <laughs> and mm-hmm. bring it up to her? You obviously do remember the paragraph, so <laughs> because, go for it. What's yeah, it say? Roll like, to remember. Uh, it says that the bodies were ripped apart, the remaining expedition, right? Mm-hmm. But then... Selkirk, the man who found, the leader of the men who found the, the remains, said that he couldn't confirm whether any Caucasians were clearly part of the remains discovered by his team, which contradicts that, you know, it it could be the Carlisles or Roger. Mm. He was very clearly a very pasty white man. <laughs> I would know. I am one. You can. So you bring that up? Yeah. Okay. What were you going to do? And then I'll just go around. I remember something saying that the books were in Roger's safe. I would like to look around the room sneakily, not like moving around, just looking. <laughs> but any uh, indication of like a pull or a secret switch okay. or anything. Go ahead concealed. and give me a spot hidden. Same role, effectively. I'm begging you. Can I push that? Yeah. Let's what did you that. get? Uh, the first one was a 74 over uh, 30. How much luck do you have? I have, uh, currently, I have 47. If you would like to spend 10, <gasps> um, you may do push that roll. But that is a large gap to push. If I might, I was going to say, I... That was my other thing that I was going to ask to look for before you said that. That you were already rolling for something yeah, else. I know. So. I'm a very lucky woman. Oh, okay. My. Let's go around and see what everyone else rolled before, mm-hmm. while you are rolling, and then you can tell me the results. Adrian. I rolled a 19 under 52, so okay. that's a half success. And Nicholas? Uh, fail. 69 over 51. Nice. Love. I have rolled a 22 under oh. 30. Okay. It works. I... Okay, so for those are the spot hiddens. Oh, yeah. I was about to say. I... You were I... rolling a psychoanalysis. I was about to say, I had a one. I rolled really well. I rolled a 32. But you have but a I one. have a one, oh. so it's fine. Okay. Uh, you don't notice, actually... It's not that you don't notice a change in Joe's expression. There is not a change in Joe's expression. Okay. The man looks like he is carved out of granite. Okay. Uh, Ophelia. Hello. So you bring up your like. Oh, yeah. So I, I was reading about the expedition. You bring and kind of just bring up the. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know what that man saw, but I certainly saw some of my brother's belongings. And I saw a whole lot of body parts. Mm. But I, it, you know what? If it, all of this is some elaborate hoax, Roger's still out of my life, and I couldn't be happier. Fair. That's fair. For those of you who passed your spot hiddens, looking around the library, you see quite a few very expensive things original volumes of books gold plated gold you know original paintings gold plated plated uh knickknacks lots of filigree lots of expensive comfortable things this was a room that was used mm. it is not for show 
Uh, there's quite a few leather bound complete editions of Dickens and Radcliffe, Ralph Waldo Emerson, and seemingly out of place, a very fat edition of Poe's collected works. I love Poe, and that seems a little thick. <laughs> and out of place because amongst contemporary masters, Poe is not considered high literature at this point in history. So it seems a little out of place that that would be there, but you do notice that kind of it's sitting in the middle of all of those books. Uh, another... Correct me if I'm wrong, but Poe being on like a shelf full of high literature at this time would be like keeping a people magazine in like the Oxford mm -hmm. library. Yep. You also notice some books on the occult kind of tucked away in a section. They're kind of hidden amongst some old reference books. I make uh, little mental notes about where those specific things are um, because I think Love right now is thinking that that Poe book is not about to pull off fully, but the other ones might. Mm. Um, what else do you do? I I don't... Perhaps this is stupid. Perhaps uh, not everybody else was planning on playing it cool, but <clears throat> when I see the book, I'm going to say, Erica, this this is a really impressive collection. I, I have to tell you. This. And I'll get up and, you know, slowly walk around the room. Mm -hmm. And then I'll and then I'll come to the it, is this Poe? Are, are you are you a fan of his? I am actually. Um I'm going to I'm going to grab the book. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. And you pull the book off the bookshelf. Yeah. And uh, uh, just... Nicholas, hmm? if you look behind you, there's a nice fat oh. Edgar Allan Poe book there. Would you pull that off the shelf for me and hand it to Adrian? Oh, oh my goodness. Looking around, what else is here? There's a gun inside here. <laughs> <laughs> you found where I hide my firearms. Oh. I, I assume this isn't Part of the props. No, that's not part of the props. <laughs> For everyone at home, it says, To Ian, with much love, Mom. Aww. I, I'm also a large fan of Edgar Allan Poe, <laughs> and my mother did give me that. Same. He's the reason is it okay if books. I go rifling through this? I'm not going to find anything like personal. It is to, to It you? is okay if you go rifling through it, especially when because you found what Excellent. you were supposed to. <laughs> and Erica it almost stops you. As you pick up the book and you start flipping through as a sheet of papers. Yeah, I'm going to oh. I'm going to intentionally <laughs> oops. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. And behind the book on the shelf, you can see a safe built into the wall. Erica, I, I apologize. I, what's wrong with me? I was just so taken by, by this collection here. The reason that the people who broke in didn't find anything of, take anything of value is because they were looking for some of my brother's things, which are in that safe. Oh. And the sheet of paper that fell out, which you may take fully oh. at this point. No need. I already wrote it down. <laughs> is a combination. Mm. While this, like scene is happening that Adrian is creating with the like paper falling down. Mm -hmm. Love is going to look at those occult books real quick to see if any of them they're, really jump out. They're generic. They're very unremarkable. It's more like esotericism mm -hmm. no, and like what's the word? Uh, academics writing about the history of magic and spiritualism and Ophelia nothing. Ophelia goes else. straight for it. <laughs> <laughs> Even you are like, oh, these are generic. Yeah. You're like, I read these in grade school. We still have to do the seance. No. Oh. <laughs> no. We have to do that seance. <laughs> right here. <laughs> no. Right now. No. She Love says, raises her eyebrows and turns to Erica when Oliver jokingly says, I do, right that here. was absolutely out of character. Yeah. That I would was prefer Salem. to not hear anything about my brother, live or dead. Uh, Erica, am I, you, oh, I was going to say, may I ask a favor? Yes. So you do not have to. Would you allow me to go through the books? Oh. If I find anything of interest, I'll tell you, but... Adrian, 
That sheet of paper has the combination that my brother thought he hid from me to the safe that's hidden behind there. Go ahead and open it. Turn it right 15, left 14, right 13, and left 12. So clever. (laughs) And you have to ship some of the other books off the shelf, but you pop the shelf open and hidden inside... Props. <laughs> uh, and you find a bound pamphlet of papers and writings and a photograph, which upon further inspection, you realize is of Dr. Coyles, or Cowles, mm-hmm. whom you met with yesterday, standing in the desert. That is... Uh. It doesn't have a date on it. Its external angles were magnificent and most strange. By their hideous beauty, I was enraptured and enthralled, and I thought myself of the daylight fools who adjudged adjudged the housing of this room as mistaken. I laughed for the glory they missed. Through the twisted door to the jeweled throne of darkness, I came with all reverence and humility to gaze upon scenes of celestial majesty and rebirth. When the six lights were lit and the great word said, then he came, he capitalized, in all the grace and splendor of the higher planes, higher planes capitalized, and I longed to sever my veins so that my life might flow into his being and make part of me a god. And that is a page within a handwritten tome, the cover of which reads, Life as a God. No, no name. Yeah, this you can have them. Frankly, I'm I'm quite done with Rogers. Everything. Uh, the other books that you find inside the safe are a leather bound tome called the Narcotic Manuscripts P N A K O T I C. A book with a French title called Selections de Livre d'Ivon, which I will spell. It's in French, but it's uh, L-I-V-R-E, D, apostrophe, capital I-V-O-N. Anybody got French? I have Latin. <laughs> and <I know> English. <laughs> another book called Amongst the Stones. And the photograph that you found was tucked into the copy of Amongst the Stones. And as I said, all of you can clearly recognize Dr. Anthony Cowles. I have a question. Mm. Um, Yes. As somebody who probably looks at pictures in medical textbooks, pictures taken, Mm -hmm. there's a lot of medical research going around, would I know the cameras of this time if they photograph improperly to make a pattern that has is on this or is that abnormal that could be a just an error in the the not even just the photography process but also in the, the film development process it could also just be weird it looks weird yeah it's like writing down here mm-hmm. But that is something we should probably talk to him about. That is the professor we talked to. Hmm. You know that man. We spoke to him yesterday. Mm. Um. Surprisingly enough, it all I comes back to Mr. Elias. I do not. I like I said, I don't recognize anything in Roger's belongings. I'm not particularly interested in any of it. Erica, could we go back to the attempted break-in? Mm-hmm. Did you did you see? The, I wasn't home. Attempt? Uh, did anyone who was here? See uh, the some attempt? of the guards. Uh, Joe, you were here. Uh, there was a handful of guys. Uh, they were wearing masks. Were there were they, any? Yeah, and uh, Oliver takes out because he grabbed one of mm-hmm. the sashes from around one of the guys that murdered Jackson. He goes. He's wearing one of these? 
Love holds it to where it looks like a head is in it. Kind of. More elaborate. Hmm. Yeah. Around the head? Yeah, the full full masks. They had they had kind of a red fabric thing going on too, though. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I, I just shot at him. It's good Scary. for you. Are you a good shot? Not as good as I should have been. That's a very good answer. You know what? I appreciate that you're trying to find out what happened to your friend, but uh, I am really sick and tired of talking about Roger. Fair enough. He was a shit. He was a terrible brother. He was a terrible businessman. And he was a terrible explorer. So... Uh, I don't know what else I can tell you about him, frankly. Erica, they, you've they been hasn't been in the papers. You've been more than gracious and more than patient with us, and I, I don't know how we can thank you uh, for the time you've given us. I, I truly do hope that when we meet again, it can be socially, because I, I miss our times together. I would like that. Thank you, Adrian. Love, it was, again, a pleasure. Absolutely. I am getting tired, though, if you don't oh, mind. That's understandable. Do you mind... Um... Hmm. I have some friends in um, in the medical field that might be good at looking at things. Do you I mind said you I... can kick those. Lovely. Do you guys mind? No, go ahead. And he'll tuck this into sure. his... Um, and just to be with clear communication, um, would rather remain anonymous as the source? Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Just looking at the manuscript uh does it look like a leather leather that was gonna be my next question <laughs> yes okay Y'all are nasty. do any of the books feel weird go ahead and give me a medicine roll mm. oh mm -hmm, no mm -hmm, sorry mm -hmm. this okay but keep in mind this could also just be ian fucking with us <laughs> like <laughs> could be Oh, I'd like to push that, please. No me gusta. What'd you get? Uh, I got a 94 over 61. 94 over 61. That's a big gap. How much luck do you have? I have 29. That's going to cost you quite a bit of it. <sighs> do you want to push it? No, I'm going to shut up and ask my nurses. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't afford to be any less lucky than I already am. No, you can't. No, no, I'm. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go and talk to some other medical professionals. Okay. <laughs> can't. Can't know them all. Here is what I will tell you about those. Uh, the Narcotic Manuscripts is uh, red leather bound. Um, there's. It's written in English. Uh, for the most part. Um, and you can see if you just flip through it, some scribbled footnotes in pen. In English? Oh, uh, yeah. The Selections de Livre de Ivan, um, is a, is written in French. Uh, does anyone speak French at all? Okay. Love's last name is LaRue. <laughs> um, does not speak French. <laughs> you can't really make out anything in that one. Um, hmm. There's definitely words in it that are not French as you're flipping through. Uh, strange words you don't recognize like Sathaga uh, or Nodens. Um, oh, and you do notice illustrations in the book that look similar to some of the symbols that you've seen already in Elias's notes. Oh. Um, amongst the stones is a handwritten book. Uh, written in English, uh, the author being a just Justin Joffrey. Um, 
and it's a leather bound book. And The Life as a God is written in English, and it is also handwritten and leather bound. What? Um, if it's okay with you guys, I'm going to keep all of the leather bound books, mm -hmm. run a few tests on them, <laughs> not try to run my luck down to zero. Um, I'm going to consult probably a few other doctors that I know and work with. Maybe a few of my nurses that do a bit more hands-on work than I do. Uh, Ophelia, hmm. give me an occult roll. I was about to ask. Mm -hmm. Looks like 30-something. 30, 30 under 60. Um, not, the, not the Life as a God book that Oliver has, but one of the other ones, as you are looking at it. Uh, this is clearly some form of animal flesh leather, Gross. not cowhide. This is very rough. You have seen similar things in some of the occult books that you have cataloged and researched. Is it human? Uh, you don't think it's human. You're not sure what it is, but it's clearly not cowhide or lambskin. Probably pig. Okay. Um, so it's, so it'd be sim, so I would think it's similar in that vein of like other mm -hmm. books I've seen like mm -hmm. that. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah. We could work on this together. Yeah. For sure. If that's all, have a good night. You've been more than helpful. And as I said, please feel free. I would love a social visit. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. And it I'll, was a um, pleasure meeting you, Nicholas, Ophelia, uh, Oliver. It was good to see you again. See you too. Lovely meeting you. <clears throat> I'll say to the um, to the bodyguard. I'll say, mm. you keep an eye on this one. She's a diamond. Hmm. <laughs> Bye, Joe. <laughs> Miss Love. <laughs> and you leave. So you all leave mm. the Carlisle Mansion. Climb back into the car with Gus, who drives you back towards the city. With a lot of uh, new information and a few books added to your collection. What would you like to do? Do we still have time to run by Sing Sing? It it's is night. late it's night. at night. <sighs> Damn, uh, no. Visiting hours are certainly not open, but... If you are going under the guise of being a doctor, you would be allowed entry, potentially. Potentially. They probably won't allow everybody. Yeah. Uh, is there anyone in particular very taken? Because I, I know for a fact that I can get me and Nick. Oh, am I? <laughs> I, I was looking around because I know your answer. <laughs> but I did enjoy your idea of Taking Nicholas with you. Oh yeah, I'm. I'm don't do well in danger. And besides, you. I, I don't want to say it's your cup of tea, but you've been used to this environment. I haven't. And as much as I would love to go, um, I don't necessarily think it would be the best idea for after a show me to just show up late night at a prison. I, uh, I'm, I'm not overly fond of, of captivity, actually. Um, if, if it's something you believe you can handle without my presence, then, then you have my blessing to do so. In that case, can I make a suggestion? Hmm. Do you three want to go with Ophelia and look at these books? Kill two birds with one proverbial stone. I'll provide what assistance I can. There, I Absolutely. really prefer the pulps. I welcome it. Yeah, let's let's go to the Wiggenheim. Okay. So are you going to stop at Sing Sing? Okay. Gus makes a detour. I try and look as doctorly as possible. I um I take out I wanna assume like I, I wanna find like uh I assume I keep like a, a notebook mm. and pen on me. Uh as an aside. Did you have a scheduled meeting with the reporter? 
I was wondering that too. <laughs> was that yeah. tonight? Did we blow off our no, corner no, to go no. to the party? No, the, the party was planned. I think it I was tomorrow. I did say I would, I would meet up with yeah, her I'd, at I'd, the office. Okay. Rebecca. Oh Rebecca. Yeah. yeah, Schosenberg. The yes. New York Times. So that would be that would be tomorrow. Cool. But I just wanted. I was like, I know that you actually did. Yes, and love. Is trying to keep it in her mind as well. Sure. <laughs> she is a little scattered at the moment. <laughs> mm -hmm. huh. Oliver, so. is the pretense here that you are investigating the murders and the similarities? I was just going to straight up lie and tell them that I'm in, I'm looking into, let's call it the psychology of a killer. Oh, that'd be a Branch point. out my my practice more into the psychology side of things and you'll be there to correct me if i'm wrong you know more than i do i doubt it not when not when it comes to <laughs> i don't know my psychology like if we're talking like a score out of 100 <laughs> it's like an 11 <laughs> um no um i i would quite appreciate your company happy to help and Gus pulls up to the front gates of Sing Sing, old Sparky's house, as it is sometimes colloquially referred to. You're about 30 miles north of the city on the east bank of the Hudson River. Sing Sing is not, does not have a particularly good reputation. It is known to be a very brutal prison. It's uh, whew. it is a prison where uh, inmates frequently go to death row, um, usually via electrocution. Hence old Sparky. And it has held in your lifetime since uh, 1920 more than quite a few executions. Oh. Um, as you approach, guards immediately flag the car down, uh, both because it's late at night and uh, very out of place. <laughs> and they come over and Gus rolls the window down and says, uh, I have a doctor who uh, visiting. Hi. And they come back to the back window of the car and uh yes my name is dr oliver west um and this is my associate nicholas porter uh we if you'll forgive me um i'm branching out to open up a new psychology office down downtown um and i was hoping if i could interview uh a few prisoners one Prisoner in particular, just to um, do a little bit of uh, medical examination, see if I can't make your lives easier, diagnose, perhaps tell you how to deal with these people a little bit easier, and help myself out with some research. Uh, yeah, hold on a minute, and you see one of the guards, one of the guards stays there with a the flashlight kind of looking at the car, the other one goes back to the guardhouse. And you can see him pick up a phone. Um, while he does that, I look over at Adrian and Love and be like, I know, I know, I know. And how do you want me to play it? See what their answer is first. Well, we'll see. And if not, we could probably pay for their time. I'll, I'll say Adrian looks tense and unnerved. He's, um... He's, I mean, I, I assume at this point everybody's familiar with seeing him just kind of jovial and, you know, mm -hmm. happy-go-lucky. But uh, his his hand is kind of white-knuckling on the, on the door, and he's just kind of staring at staring at the building. You know you don't have to come in. Well, yeah, of course. Yes, I'm, uh, yeah, I, I know that. Yeah, of course. <clears throat> I get it. The place is creepy as shit. It's, um... You know, the descriptions don't uh, do it justice. No. But, Adrian, if we're not back before morning, I would really appreciate a rescue. Yeah. 
Certainly. And around that time, the guard comes back. Uh, Dr. West? Yes. Do you have uh, credentials I can see? I do. I, I feel like Oliver carries that shit with pride. Probably just. does. And you, you hand over um, your identification and your diploma, basically. Uh, he... My pocket diploma. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, Subwarden uh, Bert Brunton will see you, meet you inside. Yeah, you can come on in. Uh, and he steps aside. Lovely. What was the name? Brunton. B-R-U-N-T-O-N. Love settles her hand off of the $50 bill that she was about to pull out of her pocketbook. <laughs> and... I have money on me. You pull I in. Need... Gus pulls in. And pulls up to the front of a uh, two-story brick entrance building to... Um, and it's essentially just a looped road that it's going to take you back out to the gate. There's no other, nowhere else to go in here. Smart. <clears throat> Nick? Let's do this. Is there a time that you project to be out? I could send. The, perhaps... I will let you know that the train station is basic. There is a train station basically oh. right next to. Um, the rail lines literally run through the middle of the prison. Oh. Um, how about this? If I'm not, if Nick and I aren't back in my place in Hell's Kitchen by morning, uh, and I take out, like, I'm sure you've got a spare key. Mm -hmm. Check on. If we're not there by morning, come get us. Okay. We're either going to be here or there. If not, there's a problem. Uh, Love will hug Oliver before he gets out of the car and just be safe in there, okay? And then she moves to hug Nicholas as well and holds him tight and even lower this time. If anything happens to him in there, you will be responsible. And she pulls it back and goes, get it done, okay? Right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as we're out of the car, I go, I am sorry for whatever the fuck she just said to you. No comment. Yep. And mm -hmm. she's waving through the window as the car drives away. <laughs> and you see, oh, let's see. Let's see what good old subwarden George Brunton looks like, shall we? You approach the building and you see a man standing out front, kind of stamping his feet, warming his hands. He's got a bigger jacket on that he obviously just threw over his shoulders to step outside. It is still quite cold. Um, short, stocky, um, you can catch salt and pepper hair, clipped very short, and actually wearing a suit. Um, they they do take uniforms uh, pretty seriously here. Um, this is not a lax prison. They are very uh, rigid. Um, despite that, he greets you very friendly. Friend, friendly, friendly. Amicably. Amicably. <laughs> it's like, uh, Dr. West? Yes. Uh, hello. The, uh, my name is Dr. West. Please, Oliver. Shakes your hand. Um, and Oliver this and is my associate. Just Porter, yes. Shakes your hand as well. Uh, this is a very unusual time to be making a well, house I call. Well, I figured it would cause the least amount of commotion instead of announcing my presence to the prisoners. Because you're you're not here on official. Not, uh, I'm I'm not associated with any larger connections and companies. If that's what you're worried about, I'm I'm here for my own general practice and perhaps to make your life a little easier. <laughs> making my life easier would make none of these guys be here. But well, perhaps I can provide a keen insight on how to deal with such people. You know, medicine's mostly psychology. No offense, doctor, but I know how to deal with most of these guys. Oh. I will say, uh, please, please come inside. Uh, I, I don't want to be out here any longer than I have to. <sighs> trust me. Uh, and you step into the entrance building, hit with warmth immediately. It's actually not freezing in here. And he will escort you through the building um, over to the death house. Mm. Mm. Love that. The death house sits in a lower corner of the prison near the river. 
Um, he starts escorting you through the building towards that section and says, uh, we will have to um, search you. No offense. Of course. Um, and I'll, I'll run over the rules as we approach. But uh, neither of you are carrying any weapons, are you? Oliver will take out the gun and scalpels. Technically, it's a matching thirty-eight gun. Yep. <laughs> uh, Can't be too careful. I don't blame you. Uh, you can just check those at the desk over here. He leads you over to a uh, check-in desk. Um, you can check your weapons. He says, also, uh, any food or anything like that that you might have on you? No. Nope. Okay. Oliver will take out a pack of cigarettes. Now you can keep those. That's fine. All right. Uh, and as he's leading you away, he says, uh, as I mentioned, um, there are a few rules. Um, I can only give you about 30 minutes to chat with. Uh, yeah, I guess you, you wanted, who did you want to talk to? We were coming along to see, uh, given the recent string of murders in my mm-hmm. neck of the woods, um, Mr. Hilton Adams. Okay. Uh, I can, like I said, I can only give you 30 minutes to talk to an inmate. Um, Adams is as good as any other, I guess. Um, you may not exchange any items with the prisoner. Please do not attempt to uh, do so. Um, that I will have to remove you from the premises if you do. Uh, please do not agitate. Do your best not to agitate or antagonize the prisoner. Also, do not um, offer them, as I said, do not offer them any items, but food, anything of that nature as well. It's prohibited, strictly. Um and if they offer you anything, do not accept it. Uh, yeah, that seems like a smart rule. I'm sad that you have to tell people that. Yeah. That's it. Uh, as long as you, you are good, I can take you over there now. Perfect. Uh, you don't mind if I keep my notebook and pen? Oh, that's perfectly fine. Yeah. Well. Um, as you approach... Um, What he colloquially refers to as the death house is mm, less pleasant looking than the uh, entrance building. He uh, he takes you back outside through out a separate exit through the yard um, down a hill over the railroad tracks. Actually, they cut through the prison and to a small ish squat building. Um, you can see from its construction, there is open courtyards inside the building. Basically, any of the prisoners who are on death row are kept separate from general populace. They have their own outdoor time, their own yard, etc. Smart. As he takes you through there, uh, he just says, uh, Adams, yes? Correct. Okay, he's in uh, cell... 12. Lovely. Uh, 30 minutes. Lovely. And uh, if you don't come back over here by then, I'll come get you. Sounds wonderful. Thank you for the, I mean, given the circumstances, the one welcome. The quick attention. Hope you uh, find out what you need to. Me too. And he sits down at a uh, small guard room. I'm going to go ahead and take it that this is a very Silence of the Lambs. There's no place for us to sit, but we are just talking. Yeah. Into Okay. Yeah. Just trying to get a sense. You walk down the <clears throat> quarter. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the dim light, you do see most of the inmates are already asleep. No one harasses you. No one really talks to you. Uh, and when you get to cell 12, you see a African-American man laying on a cot. Um, it's a pretty cramped cell. There's a toilet, a metal-framed bed, and a small desk and chair. No window. Um, just, But there are windows across the corridor letting some natural light in from the moon. And uh, he's just laying on the cot. He is... Let me flip over to him briefly. Um... Not, he's a little older than you, but not too much, like late 20s, early 30s, perhaps. I'm early 30s. Yeah. he's He might be older than you, but that could also just be the fact that he's in prison. Yeah, tends to age someone. 
Um, strong features. Appears particularly muscular, although the uniform he's wearing is ill-fitting. It looks a little too baggy. Maybe he's lost some weight since he's been in prison. Um, black and white striped denim. Short, dark hair, lightly peppered with gray, um, but a youngish face. And as you stand there, uh, before you can do anything to get his attention, he does actually turn, lift his head and look up, and he says, Well, uh, you two ain't guards. Correct. Um, it's a pleasure he sits up. Mr. Adams, my name is Dr. Oliver West. I was wondering if you'd be willing to talk to us for a little bit. Doctor, huh? What kind? Medicine. Okay. Well, I, I would mean, shake your hand, but I don't think that would uh, go over too well. I think that would get you in a bit of trouble, and that's not what I'm here for. How uh, How can I help you? I'm going to get to the long and short of it. I'm here to... And we're with out of earshot of the guards, if I talk low enough. Yeah. Because I'm not trying to wake you. the other. You oh, can yeah. like if you look back down the hallway, you can see him watching through a window. Mm -hmm. um, but he's just watching to make sure nothing funny happens. He's not like scrutinizing. He's yeah. not, and he can't hear you from where he is. And as far as he knows, I'm not trying to wake the other inmates. Correct. Um, I'm gonna get the long and short of it. I'm here to talk about the murders. And before you make I any figured. assumptions, I don't think you did it. Well, that makes two of us. Three. Didn't the reporter that talked to you earlier also not believe you did it? Oh, yeah, her. Yeah, Rebecca. Yep, she uh, she believed me. And Which, why was that? I guess uh, not everyone just assumes you're guilty because of the color of your skin. Yeah. Listen, um, we just want to talk. And should any of this information lead to... The reopening of your case? That's just how things will end up. I mean... But I'm not here to cause any more harm. Good luck, but I don't believe the uh, police will care. No, oh, I don't expect the police to care. But they don't care about a lot in this city. I am, I am happy to answer your questions. So, let's play reporter, Nick. Tell what? us what happened. What happened? I honestly don't know. What do you remember? I like my community. I like where I live. You know, it's... New York City is New York City, but Harlem, you know, it's home. I think I noticed the disappearances before a lot of other people did. Um, I don't know how long they were happening, uh, but I, I do, I think they, that were going on while I was at, at, you know, over in Europe. Uh, but, uh, they could have been going on for a lot longer than that, but I noticed them when I got back. You mentioned this disappearances as in people were gone before bodies were mm -hmm. found. Mm hmm. Monthly basis. Someone would just stop coming around to the store, stop being at the, you know. Block parties. Was it the same time every month? I don't know, honestly. I um, I didn't notice. It was just that you know, it's that that you suddenly notice someone that's not coming around anymore. Of course. Um, uh, this is going to sound like a very strange question, but I'd like to try and answer as honest as possible. Mm-hmm. Were there any strange weather events? Any specifically anything strange in the sky? Anything out mm. of usual for the season? Not that I know of. Did anything no. change within the community? No different smell on the wind? No. Mr. Adams... What I'm trying to get at is that human intuition is a wild thing. We tend to notice things without actually noticing them. If anything in your gut says something was different, 
even if it does not seem like it has anything to do with this. I want you to tell me. Go ahead and make me a persuade roll. <laughs> I will also accept fast talk or charm if those are higher, charm but persuade is preferable. Fast talk is... F- I will take charm. <laughs> <laughs> no. Mm-mm. 91 over 15. What about you? I have no interpersonal skills whatsoever. Yeah. Um, but yep. p- pivoting from that, you were arrested. Uh, why? Were you at the scene? Were you holding a, a weapon? How did it lead back to you? <laughs> It was my knife. Uh, so I think the last I I was looking into the disappearances and I think that the last murder was done specifically to frame me. Uh, I wasn't stupid enough to carry my bolo with me when I was looking around, but uh, I think it was pl- planted at the scene. I don't know why the cops wanted to frame me, but they did. Do you remember specifically who the arresting officer was? So oh, yes, I do. Uh, that would have been Robson. Uh, give me one second. You're good. One sec. I can misspell that. Oh no, no, it's R O B S O N. Okay. I'm looking up exactly who he is, just for like his title. There we go. Uh, Captain Walter Robson. And did, did he investigate all the murders or just the one that was linking you to them? I don't know. I definitely saw him around a few times while I was doing my own digging. But, uh, he's definitely the one who, uh, pointed the finger at me. Strange. And that murder was the only one they could connect you to. Well, I mean, they found my knife at the scene, supposedly, but I know my knife didn't do that. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, the standard issue uh, infantry knives, bolos. Unfortunately, no, but... How about you? You look like you served. I actually didn't. Um, Do you know if Robson did, though? Was there any kind of grievance of... You serving uh, and him not? I don't know. Uh, but bolos are unique. It's a pretty specific type of blade. Uh, I know that it wasn't used in the murders, but it's similar enough. Anyone looking at it who isn't trained to look at those things or isn't used to seeing how they're used for good or bad is going to make that mistake. And that was all they had on you, just the knife. I. That's all they if needed. If this was a perfect world, where shitheads like that weren't in charge, that's all they had on you. And the fact that I was hanging around in the areas they happened, because, a, I lived there, and b, I was looking into what was going on in my neighborhood. That's fair. Did you know anybody who was attacked? I mean, personally. I don't know. I don't know any of the explicit victims, but I knew them. You know what I mean? Understandable. It was your neighborhood. Listen, are you serious? You too serious about finding out who really did this? Why wouldn't I be? Because a lot of people ask questions just to get a good story. I'm going to lean in. And so that not many other people can hear me. In fact, I think Nick's going to have to strain if he wants to hear me and goes. I know what it's like. Not exactly. But to be judged for what you are rather than the character. I don't believe that anybody is guilty until I see it for myself. Evidence is a fact and the fact that they found a knife similar to yours in a body in your neighborhood is fucking bullshit to me. Besides, I don't like cops at the best of times. Hmm. 
I think I know who did it. Who do you think did it? You're going to have to bear with me. In digging around, I had some friends helping me. And we heard about some whispers about a cult. Cult of the Bloody Tongue, something like that. We looked it up, supposedly linking back to Kenya, a whole bunch of other ties there that we weren't too familiar with, but we do know there's this place called the Juju House. We think there was something going on there, and I was casing the joint. I was keeping an eye on it, and I think that's when I got fingered for uh, a good uh, scapegoat. Mm. I think I was a little careless. Does the name Silas Nakwane mean anything mm. to you? Yes, it does. I don't know him personally, but uh, he uh, he's the proprietor there. He's not the one you want to look out for, though. Who is? Madari. M apostrophe D A R I. He's the uh he If he if there's anyone behind these, it's him. And keep an eye out for that guy. Will do. Will do. This helps more than you know. In fact, we had already had our eyes set on the Juju house. Be careful. I think uh, I think I was a little careless, and uh, someone s- spotted me and gave that information over to you know the cops, and that's when uh, they came knocking on my door. Did you ever see? Last question before I know they're gonna cut us off. Did you ever see somebody with a ribbon tied around their head? Oh, yeah. It would be red. Around there? Mm-hmm. Listen. All the disappearances, the murder, they were happening in a specific area. There was a pa- there was a pattern. The disappearances happened during a new moon when it was dark out. The murders, not so much. The murders were, I think the murders weren't entirely intentional. Um, And they all happened outside of this radius around uh, West 137th Street. That area between Lennox and the river. I know it. Other than the one that got me arrested, nothing happened in that area. And that's why I think... It almost seems like they're steering clear of a place. Mm-hmm. Not to draw attention. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the shitty thing about humans. Even when we're trying not to do patterns, we rock right into one. We're all uh, creatures of habit. Unfortunately, some people's habits are a bit nastier than others. Yeah, those sound really familiar to uh, what I saw. Look. We Y'all have were... had a run-in with these guys before, haven't you? They killed a friend of ours. Oh, I'm sorry. A friend who asked very nicely that we continue looking into this. Well, hey, if uh, you're able to clear my name, I'd appreciate it. I'd love to. One more. Oh, go for it. Hilton, is there anything you would like us to share with your family if we see them? Exactly my mind. Or Rebecca, if there's something that she couldn't print to the news. Nah, she's done all she can. Don't don't go bothering her, but uh, if you can go chat with Millie, my wife. Just let her know I love her. In case uh, she can't get over here again before, you know, I don't want her to see me like this, but. I've been around a lot of dying people. You don't seem like one. Hmm. Besides. Prefer not to. I'd seen a lot of people in much worse conditions with their family. 
Now, if you don't mind, I like knowing when my due date is. Date set. We don't yet. Okay. But um, That's good. Hey, you know. Let the legal system take its fucking time. And maybe if you can find out a few things, we'll, uh, that won't happen. I'll try my best. Look, I meant I it. appreciate, forgive me if I remain uh, <laughs> pleasantly skeptical, but I appreciate it. I meant it. I get what it's like for someone to look at you and make assumptions. Maybe not as much anymore, but I do. Certainly. Appreciate it. Sleep tight. He nods, waits for you to walk away, mm -hmm. and then you hear the cot shift. And you, you start walking back over to the guard house. Nick, I'd like to get the fuck out of here. Okay. Brunton nods. Helpful? Very much so. Good. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, hopefully, you know, the more we can do for society, the better. Yeah. Um. It is. Uh. My my uh, boys over at the gate said that the car that dropped you off left. Do you have a? I I got a place in Hell's Kitchen. And okay. I... Uh, the next train will be coming through relatively soon. Uh. About that, is there a reason? There's a train stop in the prison. Oh, it's right outside. The, 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 so, but the rails run through it. Originally, when um, Old Sparky was built, mm. the train was the only way to get up here. So they decided to have it cut right through the yard. I imagine the inmates don't sleep well with that. Yeah, it's not the best situation, I'm going to be honest. But Mindsets have changed. Back when this place was originally built, people didn't care too much how prisoners slept. It seems like you do, though. I mean, trust me, I'm not sympathetic to, I'm not entirely sympathetic to, you know, their plights, but uh, everyone deserves to be treated with a little dignity. I appreciate that. And I think that's why you know how to handle these guys. Treat them like people. Exactly. Uh, I could probably have one of the boys just so you don't have to walk in the cold to give you a lift over to the station. It's not too far away, but um, actually, I think we'll walk. Okay, all right. Well, uh, he leads you back to the entrance building. Uh, checks um your weapons, gives everything back to you, and you are sent on your way. That was. As soon as we're out the door, I, like, turn to Nick. So much more information than I was expecting. Shit. It's nice to know that uh, Hilton was on a similar path. Or shitty to know he was on a similar path. I don't want to end up like him. No. We uh, need to be careful. Hence why I wanted to walk unescorted back. <laughs> hey, I don't... Trust cops. I I appreciate you coming with me. Look, I I know it's not definitely our cup of tea to be here, but I I appreciate the company. Happy to help. I'm happy we got out. Me too. Um train station. <laughs> and you two are able to catch a train and head back to Oliver's Brownstone on Disturbed. We're going to rewind a little bit and jump back over to our other friends who Gus takes to the Guggenheim? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you had a few books you wanted to look into. Yeah. So back in your offices, uh, you have two leather, three leather bound books and then a, a kind of a collection of handwritten poems. Um, what do you want to check out first? Um, amongst the stones. Amongst the stones. Okay, one moment. So, amongst the stones, as I mentioned, is a English handwritten collection of poems, uh, bound in what you were able to pretty easily identify as an unusual leather. 
Uh, you asked if it was human, I believe, and I said no. But uh, it's definitely not the usual leathers used to bind books. Mm -hmm. What would you like to know about it? Um, is it bad skin? Yeah. Holy is it shit, bat wait. skin? Yeah, that's my guess. Wait, holy shit, <laughs> what? That might actually be. <laughs> that's such a wonderful no. guess. You have a praise, correct? Who? Uh, you have a praise as a skill? Yeah, whoa. Yes. Go ahead and roll that. Oh, God. Next question. Is it good? <laughs> what? Did you did you pass a roll? <gasps> Have the Norse found 30? their gods? Wait, six under 30. <gasps> six oh, under 30? Six. Yeah. Wait, that's a, a single digit that's... number? You rolled a single digit yeah. number. Yeah, that's a fifth. Oh, my God. So you you, you go through, and um, in addition to just examining the book itself, you're able to cross-reference it. Um, this is an original handwritten collection of poems that were later published in a different book. The author, Justin uh, Joffrey, published a book called People of the Monolith. Um, wait, what year is it? 19... 1920. <laughs> <laughs> what year is it? I thought it was 25. 25? 25? Okay, so uh, scratch that. Pretend I didn't say any of that. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, we got so excited. Hard. This is a this is a handwritten collection. Um you're not sure what specifically drew um Roger to these, but um, the cover appears to be the skin of a, a creature you have never seen before. This is not cowhide. This is not lambskin. This is not pig leather. You are unable to identify it. Um... Okay, that's a curiosity. Do you read it? Yeah. Okay. Skim through. Um, going through the book, you do find a poem called The Trappings of a Queen. Mm -hmm. And as you're reading it, Oh, uh, no. What do you mean? You lose three stability. I literally was going to make the joke of if you roll a d6 next, I quit. <laughs> However. <laughs> you gain plus two to your Cthulhu Mythos rating. Oh. Oh, How many? Two. So you lose three stability. You mm. gain two Cthulhu Mythos, which also brings your max stability down by two. Oh. So I what, what's your Cthulhu Mythos rating? One. And it's going up to three? Yeah. So your max stability is now 96 instead of 98. Oh. And there's no way to get that back. There is not. Mm. So Amnesia, can... technically. Oh. Hey, check. <laughs> I'm kidding. This is this is a subtle change, though, as you're reading. You don't experience any visions. You don't have any strange memories or strange. Uh, nothing strange happens, but you do as you are gaining this knowledge. You feel that grasp of reality kind of shift, and your worldview changes a little bit as you read about the essentially the dread ruler Nitocris N I T O C R I S in the regal paraphernalia in great detail. Are there any other books you'd like to look at? No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, life as a god. Life as a god. 
Mm-hmm. Go ahead and give me a medicine roll. Oh my god. Anyone present. I don't have medicine. Uh, you have a base rating. I don't know what it is. Uh, it should be in parentheses next to it. Is it a one? Oh, one? zero one. Mm-hmm. There. Did you pass? No. <laughs> I don't I know what's happening. <laughs> that eight sure looks like a zero, and I almost made it. Oh. I got a seven. I don't know what's going on. Ooh. I promise I don't have cooties. Um. This one is also definitely not normal leather bound. But you aren't able to clearly identify it. Um, But as you're flipping through, Mm -hmm. you know that page you found earlier? Mm -hmm. Nope, not that one. Oh, Oh. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Something familiar about it. Like, the things that you're looking, reading in Life as a God as you're skimming are similar to what is on that page that was ripped from another book. Not the same. Definitely different writing style. Mm -hmm. But similar. This is also uh, the the handwritten versus printed, so. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Similar-ish. is the what it's about similar like the passage like yes. the, yeah it's different 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 cult you're seeing something about the pharaoh of darkness the brotherhood of the black pharaoh similar but not the same and this is a thick handwritten diary is there is it dated uh some passages are, and you do see a uh, 1810 in there. Mm. So over 100 years old. So this cult has either been around for a long time or they're similar cults doing the same thing? Mm-hmm. Or it's just one massive cult that has been identified differently through different cultures. That too. Either way, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything else you would like to look into? I don't like really write down any other names. No. <laughs> the other two books, as I mentioned, uh, one of which is written in French. The other one, um, as you flip through the Nicotic manuscript, you notice... It's unusual. It appears to be a translation of another text. Um, This is similar, more similar to the occult writings rather than like a handwritten journal and Mm -hmm. like entries like that. Give me an occult role. There it is. Yep. In all things, there must be balance. Yep. 85 over 60. Would you like to push it? What happens if I push it again? You have to spend some luck. And if you still fail, something bad could happen. Uh. But otherwise, it gives you a chance to roll again. Yeah, let me let me spend some luck. Okay. Uh, that is uh, almost a spread of 20. So we are going to require you to spend... Four luck. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't make that face. He'll about change to, that shit. About to I, don't know, I almost said five. So <laughs> it's fine. You gave us what ten <laughs> earlier. Yep. No, Dude, that was a you had like a forty spread. <laughs> you had like I a ninety something over sixty. It was thirty. Thank you very much. Actually, technically, it was twenty nine. But you know, <laughs> I'm like seven. <clears throat> can't do math. Your luck is what? What? It was 50, now it's 46. That's not too bad. Yeah. You so I can roll again. Me. Yep, go ahead and roll a cult again. Oh no. Hate my life. 77 over 60. It's better. Man. Is it? 
Well, you rolled in the <laughs> 80s the last time. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I don't know. Time to lose my mind. Force stability. Ooh. I lose force stability? Mm -hmm. Ooh. You can, you can regain force stability, remember? Yeah, yeah. As your mind swims in visions of a great city built on an alien planet pass through your mind and indescribable creatures you get glimpses of passing through it and then it just as one clearly turns its attention to you you snap back to reality Snap back to reality. I was trying was so hard not to make the joke. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I will not be the one. <laughs> and these are the words he imparts upon your mind. <laughs> there goes gravity. Great God, Zeminem. What does it look like when she does that? Feeling like a Raven Simone. Very good question. Because <laughs> I love isn't too interested in books. She's here to support her friend. You see, as Ophelia is like looking at the book and reading a passage, her eyes roll back in her head and she doesn't physically move, but there's just this moment of she's clearly not here. You're going to take this. And book then and she kind of like shakes her head and like put it on the mirror we, <laughs> you still have. Um, Ophelia, hello. I'm like, oh. <laughs> and when she comes back, uh, love is waving her hand in front of your face. I just saw a planet. I don't even know. I have no idea. There are like things and like monsters, like no, cl like I am losing my mind. I don't know what's happening. Hmm. From reading the book? Yeah, it was like something happened and I saw it. Uh, so. You saw a planet. Yeah. Like a city? A city? And it had these creatures going through it, and one of them saw me, and I came back. Oh. Well, that's good. It's not good at all. But, I mean, it happened. Well, two options. One, that wasn't real, and we're fine. Second option, that was real. And we're not fine. And it's so far away. Well, I, it definitely has to do with the cult that's in New York City. So, I mean... Uh, I'm not sure what a vision of an, a city would mean. I don't know either. Hmm. Is that everything you found in the books, or...? Thing I found. It is. Okay, that's that's everything I found. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, perhaps Oliver or Nicholas might know what that is. I mean, didn't you and Oliver see say you saw something in the mirror that I have? I saw black tentacles in darkness. Yeah, it was her and me. I mean, I'm not here. <laughs> um... <laughs> Oh. And those tentacles have been in my mind since. Maybe you should stop looking at things for right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is my job. <laughs> Maybe you should stop looking at old things you say to the archivist. <laughs> I mean, things pertaining to current subjects. Perhaps we should have just for like maybe a week. Does that sound reasonable? Just like a break for your for your brain, I think. I, I can try, but I don't, I already don't feel all there, kinda, ever since Peru. It's been kinda slipping. I get that. If you ever feel uncomfortable, you, you're always welcome in my home. No, thank you. I'm so kind. And as you finish your research and perhaps rest for the rest of the evening, we'll jump to the morning hmm. where Oliver 
and Nicholas are at Oliver's house. I've given up my bed, and I will not take no for an answer. Thank you. And there's a knock at the door. Uh, yeah, love, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, and I open up the door. And you see two detectives standing there. Can I help you? Dr. Oliver West? Uh, who's asking? Uh, yeah. I'm... One sec. <laughs> Uh, da, 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 da. There we go. Yeah, I'm a uh, detective Doherty. This is uh, Detective uh, Easton. Um, you might come down to the station with us, answer a few questions. About what? Uh, just uh, just some routine stuff about maybe some uh, poking around you were doing up at uh, Sing Sing last night. I was doing some research. Yeah, no, we just have some questions. <clears throat> you wouldn't mind my associate coming with me, would you? Uh, your associate being a uh, Mr. Nicholas Porter? We'd prefer it, in fact. Hey, Nick, we mm -hmm. got visitors. Uh, give me three seconds. And I turn around and I scribble a note mm -hmm. where we're going to be. And like, fuck, come get us. And I rip it off and I um, I put it underneath like, I'm going to say like there's a book that you know like is Oliver's favorite. I'm going to just put it underneath there like on the counter just to make sure you know where to find it. And I will grab my briefcase that has all my shit in it. Mm -hmm. And I'll be like. Less subtly than that, let's say making breakfast or something, mm -hmm. just make a obvious spill. So it oh. looks like something happened. <laughs> right. Um, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, be right there. Sorry. Yes. You kind of burst in on us. A um, little rude. Give us a moment. And I try and close the door. They don't let you. <sighs> uh, what, you want me to change in front of you? Please. I'd like to get into clothes that I can. I'm in my pajamas. Do you want me to come with you or not? Yeah. What am I, lanky ass, going to climb out the fucking window? I've seen Stranger. Just let me go to my room, please. Yeah, go stay ahead. here. And I'll stay in eyesight of them. Yeah, I go to my room. Okay. And my scalpels are in my pocket. I, I probably keep my gun in the briefcase, probably like, away from idea. me, but the scalpels are on me. Sure. Um, I will also take... I'm going to take the matches. Okay. And just, no, no, I'm not going to take anything with me. That's going to be a bad <laughs> idea. That's going to bite me in the ass. I'm not going to take anything with me. Um, besides all of my shit in my briefcase. And okay. My... Do you leave the scalpels? No. Okay, you take No, I, I anything that has to do with what we've been digging around with, I okay. leave here. <laughs> okay. So you don't take any of the clues with no. you? No. No, that one's going to bite me in the ass. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. And you said their names were? Uh, Detective Doherty and Eason. Easton. That's also something I include in the note, is names. And then, yeah, let's go. <sighs> All right. And they lead you outside to an unmarked car. Mm. And love as... You are you uh, are you all heading over to Oliver's in the morning or is I guess, this all yeah. separate? No, we can go. Party. Okay. Yeah. As you are all heading over, you see Oliver and Nicholas climbing into the back of a car with two clearly uh NYPD's finest. Are they cuffed? No, they're not cuffed. I try and catch your eye. You don't see them. Oh. Fuck. Mm. That they're they're like literally coming down the street and see you ahead of them. Love. And that <laughs> is where we're going to end. <laughs> I knew one of us tonight. was going to get fucking arrested. <laughs> Congratulations to our giveaway winners. Uh, you will be notified in chat. And uh, please use that for bail money. <laughs> please. <laughs> Thank if you. If you join for... us on Patreon, we're posting bail there. <laughs> We hope you've enjoyed the penultimate episode of our first season of Massive Nyarlathotep. Join us next week. For our jailbreak. For our finale. 
and we find out what happens to Oliver and Nicholas, and perhaps we investigate the Juju house. Have a good night. Oh